Hey there chemists, in the last lesson we looked at reductions, which involved taking carbonyl compounds like aldehydes and ketones, adding reagents like sodium borohydride or lithium aluminum hydride, and turning them into alcohols. Today we're going to focus on doing the opposite transformation, what we call an oxidation, totally different reagent, and the reverse transformation, taking things like alcohols and turning them into ketones. So let's see how we do this. Uh, a common reagent for doing this, there's an example on your notes already, there's a secondary alcohol turning into some ketone with just the generic symbol for oxidation. That's what that symbol means. And one of the most common ones for doing this is a chromium-based oxidation called the Jones oxidation. Which involves chromium oxide. I'll show a little bit of how this reaction works. There's chromium oxide. You actually first mix it with water to make chromic acid. This might look a little strange because it's all inorganic chemistry, but we're going somewhere. There's chromic acid. And then it's this that reacts with an alcohol. So I'll use just isopropanol as a secondary alcohol. And it will do an exchange with one of the OH groups for this entire alcohol group. So you'll get an intermediate. And it looks like this. This is called a chromate ester. You actually lose water. And this is the species that undergoes the actual oxidation. What happens is you lose a hydrogen from what used to be the alcohol carbon. Chromium actually takes it, or the oxygen of the chromium takes it. The CH bond breaks and becomes a CO double bond. That breaks the chromium oxygen bond, and that's how you get your carbonyl. And you get a byproduct, you get a reduced chromium species. And even though there's lots of different reagents that we'll see in addition to the Jones oxidation, they all have this same feature that involves removing the hydrogen that used to be attached to the alcohol carbon and the CH electrons becoming the pi bond. That's where the extra pi bond comes from. So I want to show you a couple of different examples of reagents that do this, and I broke them down into mild oxidations and then strong oxidations. Mild oxidations will take things like a primary alcohol, such as ethanol, and convert them into aldehydes. Or we could take a secondary alcohol, as we saw in the example up above, and convert them into ketones. And let's pretend we had a tertiary alcohol. What type of functional group would we get from that? No reaction. There's no hydrogen to remove, if you think about the mechanism up above. You obviously can't get a double bond between that spot. You'd violate the octet on carbon. So uh, we get aldehydes and ketones from oxidations with these reagents. Uh, the reagents we often write out is the acronym or the person's name because they're a little bit more complicated, but I'll show you what some of them are. PCC stands for pyridinium chlorochromate. which is a different chromium-based reagent. It's got a pyridine, which is a benzene with a nitrogen instead of a carbon at one of the positions, but it's actually a pyridinium, so it's protonated with a positive charge. And a chlorochromate looks like this. Uh, a very similar reagent is known as PDC. This is also a pyridinium. Uh, but it's a dichromate. So you have the same pyridine, protonated, proton, uh, dichromate, if you remember from your general chemistry classes, Cr2, O7, 2 negative. Looks like this if you were to draw it out. two chromiums, your seven oxygens. So that means I actually need two 
pyridinium just to balance the charge, just to show you what those reagents look like. There's one other, it's named after a chemist, it's a named reaction, it's called the Swern oxidation. It's actually very useful because it doesn't use all these toxic heavy metal chromium based compounds. Uh, it's a series of three reagents. Uh, it is oxalyl chloride, COCl2, in the presence of dimethyl sulfoxide, DMSO, and then a base, usually an amine base like triethylamine. So if you see that combination, that's a recipe for the sworn oxidation. The important thing is to know that you get things like aldehydes from primary alcohols and ketones from secondary alcohols. So what's the difference between this and the strong oxidations? Well, in the beginning, not a lot. I'll go through all three, the primary, the secondary, and the tertiary possibilities. So a primary alcohol versus a tertiary alcohol, sorry, secondary versus a tertiary alcohol. And the only one that's different is the primary. Everything else is the same. And in fact, at first it looks like it does the same thing. Primary alcohols under these strong oxidizing conditions, including the Jones oxidation that we saw a moment ago, first makes an aldehyde, but it doesn't stop there. It undergoes a subsequent oxidation and you actually get a carboxylic acid. It's one of the first times we've seen carboxylic acid syntheses, uh, not since the days of oxidative cleavage of alkenes have we come across those. Secondary alcohols give you ketones, just like they did for the mild oxidation, and tertiary alcohols also undergo no reaction. So even though there's a variety of different reagents you might see that do oxidations, the only one to watch out for is what happens with a primary alcohol. A mild oxidizing agent will stop at the aldehyde, whereas a strong one will go all the way to the carboxylic acid. Let's actually flip the page and take an example of this right away and take a look at an example on the back. Here is uh, a molecule that has a tertiary, primary, and secondary alcohol all in the same molecule. PCC is a mild oxidation. The tertiary alcohol stays put. Secondary alcohol becomes a ketone and then the primary alcohol becomes an aldehyde, as opposed to the one right next to it. The only difference is the primary alcohol becomes a carboxylic acid. So just watch out for the primary alcohol and you'll be fine. The other thing I have in your notes for today is technically also an oxidation, but it's a halogenation. Halogenations also count as oxidations because they change the oxidation state of the carbon, uh, even though we're not adding oxygen. And what we're doing is wrapping this up with the reaction of an alcohol. So I call this halogenation and also tosylation. The main point of this is we are converting an alcohol to a leaving group. Alcohols are not good leaving groups, but we can convert them into good leaving groups and there's three different ways. You can halogenate, you can, uh, with, with bromine, you can halogenate with chlorine, or you can make what's called a tosylate, which you remember are SN2 reactions. It's one of the best leaving groups out there. So I'll go through all three of those. Number one, uh, halogenation with the halo acids, HCl or HBr. This is general for tertiary and secondary alcohols. It's going to depend on what type of alcohol we have, secondary or tertiary alcohols. And the reaction looks like this. If you have, let's say, a tertiary alcohol, and I treat it with just HBr, the halo acid, you substitute the alcohol for a halogen, in this case, a bromine, and I'm set up to do an E2 reaction or something like that. Mechanistically, how does it happen? Well, you protonate the alcohol, so it becomes a water molecule. That water molecule leaves. You get a carbocation, and then the bromide from the HBr attacks that cation. And instead of HBr, we could use HCl. You just get the chloride instead of the bromide. So you can see why I said this is exclusive for things like 
tertiary alcohols and even some secondary alcohols. It would obviously also work fine on allylic or benzylic alcohols because it's the formation of that carbocation that's the restriction. Uh, there's a second way to halogenate. What if I don't have a good carbocation? You can halogenate halogenation uh, with a reagent known as thionyl chloride, Cl2. This is a special reagent for chlorination. That means you turn the OH into a chlorine. This is good for primary alcohols and secondaries, depending on how good the cation is. So if I have, let's say, ethanol, and I react this with SOCl2, thionyl chloride, it substitutes the OH for chlorine. How does it happen? We draw out SOCl2, looks like this. The alcohol attacks the sulfur. You actually bring the electrons up to a sulfur a sulfoxide bond. You actually reform the sulfur oxygen bond. It comes back down, kicks out a chloride. You lose an equivalent of HCl and abbreviate all of that right here. And it's this species that gets attacked by a chloride ion. So the chloride will actually attack that carbon, kick out that oxygen in SN2. In fact, I'll show the arrows for that, because that means if I do this on a molecule that has stereochemistry, you'll get the inversion of stereochemistry. There's one other and it is a tosylation. And this is more generic. We could do this on just about any alcohol. Tosylation is how you have an alcohol. I'll use a primary alcohol. Treat it with what's called tosyl chloride. And you turn it into a sulfonate, which is abbreviated OTS. Uh, the reagents uh, tosyl chloride, I'll show you, look like this. It's actually a sulfone. With a toluene attached. Which looks like that. Uh, it does chemistry that's related to carboxylic acid derivatives, even though there's no carbon here, but sulfone chemistry. Um, so, that's effectively how we turn any alcohol into uh, a leaving group. Oh, there's actually one other I should show on here. I just realized, in addition to tosylates and chlorides, uh, what about if I want a bromine, and it's on a primary or secondary uh, bromination? With a reagent known as phosphorus tribromide. Let's use a secondary chiral alcohol for this. That will do a substitution with a bromine. And it also has a feature that's SN2 related, so you get inversion of stereochemistry. You can even see how this works. The alcohol attacks the phosphorus with three bromines attached to it. You have a new oxygen phosphorus bond. And then a bromide does an SN2, similar to that last part of the thionyl chloride mechanism a moment ago, but that's why we get inversion of stereochemistry, which only matters if it's on the secondary with an asymmetric carbon. Okay, so <laughs> lots of different reactions to use today. How do you take alcohols and turn them into leaving groups? Or how do you take alcohols and turn them into carbonyl compounds? Those both qualify as oxidation. They'll be very useful in synthesis problems.